Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we are going to be returning to War on the Sea. Uh, in today's stream and video, we are going to be taking a look at the campaign game. So yesterday I focused mostly on the battles uh, and what I showed off about this brand new game out by Killerfish Games. But in my mind, the key for any game like this and it, you know, how compelling it will be is how well it executes on the campaign. Battles are fun and good and all that, but I don't think War on the Sea would hold me all that long, given that the game does have some limitations around the amount of ships you can have in individual battles, as well as aircraft. Uh, so unless you're, you know, it's hard to build, like, authentic, complete recreations of individual battles, right? You're not going to be able to fight the full battle of Midway in something like this, just as, like, a battle scenario. Um, and so, you know, what really is going to make this game either succeed or fail is how it manages uh, the campaign game, which is supposed to be a dynamic campaign of, of the South Pacific campaign, specifically the Guadalcanal campaign in 1942 to 43. So let, with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into the campaign and, and uh, see what we like about it or dislike or... Well, I don't know, let's just figure it out. You can see there are two campaign options, Operation Watchtower, which is played from the side of the Americans, and the Battle of Guadalcanal, which is played from the side of the Japanese. They both start on August 7th of 1942, and in today's video we're going to be playing Operation Watchtower, which is the American side of the campaign. So let's go ahead and jump in. Okay, so this is very similar to, like, um, Cold Waters, in a sense. Uh, when you first go into the campaign, you get a, sort of a briefing card overview. Obviously, this gives you the prelude to World War II, start talking about the Japanese war in China, the eventual Allied sanctions against Japan, and the eventual Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor, uh, kicking the war off against the Americans. The next card here goes into talking about sort of the expanding role of air power in the war, and it talks about the uh, Battle of the Coral Sea in the spring of 1942, uh, and then the following card jumps right into Midway. So it's kind of setting the stage for the South Pacific campaign because Coral Sea is sort of the first, uh, at least partial check on the Japanese forces. Midway completely alters the strategic picture in the Pacific, and as a result of the, the heavy losses that the Japanese suffer at Midway, uh, the ability for the Allies to contest and counterattack in the South Pacific is, uh, is occur, I guess, is manifested. So then you get the Operation Watchtower, August 7th, 1942 card. The Battle of Midway last month has significantly weakened J uh, Japan, uh, Jap Japan's carrier strength in the Pacific and allowed the Allies to go on the offensive. One initial goal is to secure the Southern Solomon Islands in a plan codenamed Operation Watchtower. Priority for this operation intensifies as Jap Japanese troops begin construction of an airfield on the island of Guadalcanal. Such an airfield would allow long-range bombers to attack the supply lines between America and Australia as well as provide air cover for Japanese naval forces pushing further south. Japanese sh uh, supply ships carrying construction materials for the airfield continue to arrive while the Allies make preparations to seize Guadalcanal. Um, so then you get the campaign overview, kind of gives you the objectives for the Allies. We need to build a rank 5 airfield on Guadalcanal. We need to take Guadalcanal. We also need to take the Florida Islands and then maintain control over Port Moresby, Milne Bay, Ranelli Island, Santa Cruz Islands, and Militia. Um, you can see locations on the map in this section of the campaign summary. Gives us all the bases and whatnot. Rabaul is a five port and five airfield. The Allies have a five port and airfield as well at New Hebrides. That's sort of our main base in the south. Port Moresby is a good port, but it's it's sort of way off here on the flank, and uh, it's only a level three airfield at the moment. You can see in terms of troops on the map right now, we have 10,000 troops at New Hebrides, 20,000 supplies, 200 engineering, 200 fuel. Uh, that's the only place that we have engineering and fuel, which are both very important for building up airfields. We have 1,000 troops at Port Moresby, 2,000 supplies, and 500 troops at Milne Bay, and 1,000 supplies. We don't know what the Japanese have on all their other bases, but we can see there are some bases that are unoccupied at Columbangra, Matilia, or Mat I I'm really sorry on the pronunciations, guys, Rennell Island, Russell Island, Santa Cruz Islands, Santa Isabel, and Vela Lavella. 
Uh, meanwhile, you can see at sea, we have no ships yet. We haven't built anything yet. We have nothing repaired, no losses, and no enemy losses. So, when we jump into the campaign map, you can see here, this is a map of the South Pacific Ocean. You've got New Guinea here on the left flank with really just two bases, one at Moresby, one at Milne Bay, sort of on the tip of New Guinea. Um, you've got an indication that Australia is down here, but there's no... There's no bases down here uh, for Australia. And then you've got Guadalcanal here. You've got the Florida Islands here. Um, I guess Florida Islands, that would be Tulagi, right? This has got to be Tulagi right here. Um, and then on the east, you've got uh, Melidia. So if we take these three bases, these are sort of our objectives here in the campaign. And that sort of closes off the advance south to the Japanese. We also have Rennell Island, which is kind of within striking distance of Guadalcanal. And then off on the east, we've got the Santa Cruz Islands. If we move further up the chain, you've got New Georgia, Columbara, and Vela La Vela. Further north, you've got the Shortland Islands, Bougainville, Buka, Rabaul, Boropop, um, Kevang, Cape Hoskins, and Cape Gloucester. So this really could become like a rings around Rabaul type campaign if the game wanted it to be, uh, based off the map. Our primary base is down here at New Hebrides. I believe this is where we have to like build all of our ships. Um, so in terms of like setting up new new naval units here, we'd have to do it down here at New Hebrides. You can see that uh, Port Moresby itself does have some aircraft already. So if we go to New Air, we can see they've got eight Wildcats and four Avengers based out of there. Meanwhile, uh, New Hebrides has uh, eight B-17s and eight Avengers as well as eight Wildcats based out of here. Um, currently, and then we also have uh, the option to start building ships and, and, and convoys and whatnot to begin the assault on Japan. You can see this game will be played in real time on the lower left-hand corner. It's currently the 7th of August, 1942. We have 250 command points. I don't know if you like... Oh, by the way, this map is off. Um, this should be better now. I don't know if you um, like earn more command points. I don't know if anybody in the chat knows if you get more command points with time or if that's something that you're fixed with. I can't imagine you'd fight the entire com campaign with 250 points, um, but I could be wrong. So I think the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to try and establish myself in the South Pacific. I'm not going to go right for Guadalcanal. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to send some troops to Rennell Island, and I'm also going to send some troops to the Santa Cruz Islands in an effort to start building up sort of a bit of a safe zone, if you will, for my shipping right up until the point where we get like on Guadalcanal. So we'll see how the AI reacts to that or you know how, how we're able to continue pushing north. But to that point, I that is my plan. By the way, do we have aircraft at New Hebrides? We've got some wildcats. Um, so my plan, as I said, is going to take Rennell Island and then also the Santa Cruz Islands as sort of our first stepping stone toward Guadalcanal. So in order to do that, I'm going to go ahead and click on the base. You get more command points from destroying enemy naval forces and every so often. Okay, thanks, no clue. All right, so we'll go to New Hebrides. We're going to go ahead and create some new task forces uh, in order to be able to take these bases. Uh, in order to do that, we're really going to need to create some C3 cargo ships. That's what allows us to transport troops, supplies, those kind of things. So I'm going to go ahead and purchase three types or type C3s just by clicking this little checkbox down here. And you can see each one of these costs 10 command points. So this task force, three C3s, 30 points to do that. I also want to make sure that we're escorting them against potential enemy submarines. So I think, I don't know why it's got Fletchers. Like, are, th are those available already? I guess they would be by late 42. Um, I'm just kind of curious, like, what would our most effective uh, anti... What's that type 1B? Oh, those are Japanese subs. Um, I'm curious what would be the right way to escort these guys. Ooh, cool. Oilers. I don't think I need an oiler quite yet. So I think maybe we'll just pick a destroyer. I'm not sure what the right class of destroyer would be. I guess we could go with a Farragut. Um, does it let me... Ch let me see here. The answer to that question, uh, f uh, Charcoal, is that War on the Sea isn't in the list of games for Twitch yet. So I think this is the closest thing that it recognizes. But it's obviously not It's not um, Atlantic Fleet. War on the Sea doesn't exist on Twitch, though. Um, all right, so I guess we'll do a Ma Mahan class destroyer. 
just one escort. I think that should be sufficient. So go ahead and choose done. This is task force one now. First things first, we're going to go ahead and load uh, some cargo on these on these ships. So I want to go ahead and let's see what we can do. Uh, same development studio, UM, USMC, although they went through a lot of changes. So just for what it's worth, I don't I don't know if it's um, if the games are great comparisons against each other or if the studio is even really all that similar to what, what it was with Atlantic Fleet. There's been a lot of turnover, but yes, it is the same studio in theory. So we're going to go ahead and load 2,000 supplies, 1,200 troops, and do we want to do 100 engineering? We'll do 100 engineering, and actually... Oh, I can't do troops and engineering? I'm confused. Oh, wait, these are the three different ships. Okay. Sorry. So I can do 2,000 supplies and... No, I can't do troops and cargo. You can only do one type of... So one ship has troops, one ship has supplies, the other ship has engineering. And then I'd actually like to load some fuel up on um, one of these as well. So I'm going to go ahead and actually add another C3. Uh, maybe I can't. That's fine. All right, so we're going to load those up. So these guys, I believe, are all all loaded up. And then we're going to go ahead and send these guys over to, to the Rinelli Island. I don't like that you have to click on the course button to end the, the course selection for your task force. All right, so we've got one task force on the way. We're going to go ahead and create another task force. This one is going to be another three C3s, and then we'll also do another Mahan. Or actually, yeah, let's do another Mahan. Ah, you can't click the same. You've got to choose a different, a different ship within the Mahan class. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and... Uh, choose done here. So this is task force two. We're going to go ahead and load them up with cargo as well. Troops, supply, supplies. And I think we'll hold off on the engineering for now. I don't know that we're going to build Santa Cruz up. So we'll just do troops and supplies actually. And then we'll send these guys up to the Santa Cruz Islands. So we've got two task forces on the way. And then I'm going to go ahead and purchase or create a surface action group so that we can basically if, if we run into trouble, we'll have kind of a, a, a battle fleet, if you will, ready to fight. So we're going to go ahead and do two heavy cruisers, the Northampton and the Chester, both Northampton class heavy cruisers. We will do, I guess... A couple of Mahan class destroyers. It's going to be kind of a light fat force. Two heavy cruisers, maybe four destroyers. Okay. You can see we now built that's going to cost us 68 uh, command points. We'll send these guys sort of in between the two task forces. And then I'm also going to go ahead and use some aircraft. We're going to go ahead and create a, um, a task force here or a bomber fleet here of B-17s that's going to fly out ahead to Rinelli Island to see if maybe they can spot any enemy ships or submarines or other things like that out ahead of us before we, we get to our targets. I'll also actually create one more task force. Because I do want to get some um, engineers. I do want to be able to build up Renelli Island. So and I, and I didn't have... I don't think I had everything I needed to do that. So I think I need, maybe I need a, an oiler as well. I'm not 100% sure. Actually, no, these guys can carry fuel, can't they? So we'll go ahead and just do one C3 with another Mahan. And then 
we'll go ahead and uh, load their cargo. No, they can't carry fuel. Okay. Interesting. Is there a way to disband a task force, by the way? Or are they like, once they're on the map, they're on the map for good? All right, so I guess I've got to do a, f a fleet oiler then, right? Okay, so our oiler will carry 100 fuel. Are these guys slower or faster? Let's go ahead and set these guys to a, to a slower speed. Just because I don't want them to arrive at the base before the troops. Okay, so with that being said, let's go ahead and unpause the game and we'll get started. And so you can see things are moving in real time. You can see units moving on the map. Thanks, wives. Appreciate it. Urena, by the way, thanks for the follow four minutes ago. I'm confused. Why? Having trouble moving around the map. Oh, that's because I've still got this selected? Hmm. All right, so you can see our aircraft are moving out way faster, obviously, than the ships. And then the rest of our, uh, our vessels here are all moving out toward their targets. These guys aren't loaded up with anything, right? Is there no way to disband? If I release, maybe? If you release ships, do you not actually get command points back? Huh. All right, well, our stuff is moving. We'll go ahead and fast forward here. All right, so our B-17s didn't spot anything. My surface action group is sort of moving up this way. Are there any? Can you, by the way, so let's slow things down a bit. We're moving at like times a thousand speed. Do my ships have... Too dark. Oh, okay. So it's actually like 1, 12.30 in the morning. Let's go ahead and fast forward here. I'm assuming I've got like float planes I can launch for scouting purposes. You can see my ship's moving here. It's now August 8th. I think we'll move these guys toward Rinelli Island. All right, so let's slow things up a bit. Let's go ahead and send uh, some patrol aircraft. Nope not the unit I want. Stop picking my course. All right, so Northampton, we'll go ahead and choose aircraft. And you see I've got four Kingfishers I can go ahead and send up on a patrol. So we're going to go ahead and send these guys out in front of the task force here as it moves up on Rinelli Island to make sure there's no enemy submarines that maybe we can detect. And that'll probably do it for the course in terms of before it runs out of fuel. So you can see float planes are going up, the Kingfishers. We sent all four out. Enemy aircraft spotted. Where the hell are these guys taking off from? It's a sea state of five. It's an enemy aircraft. I'm hoping it's a float plane. Looks like it's a float plane. 
So we'll go ahead and ignore that because I'm assuming it's not a bomber. If it's a bomber, that would be a problem, but a float plane should be fine. So yeah, just sort of hovering over our aircraft or over our fleet. Whoops. All right, so now let's go ahead and see if we can't unload this task force. And there you go. We took Santa Cruz Island. So Santa Cruz Island now has 1,200 troops on it and 4,000 supplies. And so now this, this task force can go ahead and return back to New Hebrides. So we took our first base. That was easy. Okay. Sorry, Lakel. All right, so we'll fast forward now. Float plane is still not detecting anything. So we took one base. We've got about 1,200 troops on Santa Cruz Island. It's a zero zero, so we'd have to have 100 engineering and fuel to build up a, an air base or a, an anchorage. We detected an enemy uh, float plane out here that's detected one of our car our cargo. Actually, it has detected our cargo task force. Hopefully, it's got no bombs on it. I'm going to go ahead and ignore it as well. I've stationed my surface task force here to the north to hopefully guard against any enemy threats. All right. So these guys, this task force should be close in. So we'll go ahead and unload all. We've gone ahead and taken Ranelli Island. We have the 1,200 troops and 2,000 supplies ashore. Didn't we load up some engineering as well? We didn't? I thought we did. God, I hate how it's like I'm still in navigation mode. I don't... All right, so actually, we'll go ahead and send these guys back to New Hebrides as well. So now we're going to go ahead and unload this fleet oiler at Rinelli as well. Okay, so all the cargo is unloaded at Rinelli. Actually, we did have 100 engineers there. So if we go ahead and we click on Rinelli here, you can see we've got a 100 engineers, 100 fuel, 2,000 supplies, and 1,200 troops, which should be enough for me to build up a airfield. So I'll go ahead and click on airfield, and there you go. We've built a level 1 airfield at Ranelli Island, and now we have the option to fly aircraft out of it. You can see here we have four Wildcats currently based out of this airfield. A level one airfield I'm assuming is not able to, you know, have any bombers or anything like that, uh, but in any event, it's a good result for us. So let's go ahead and have these guys set a course for New Hebrides and return back there. And then we'll have our task force, our surface task force with warships, um, probably make the same, make, make the same return I think the next mission is going to be to start contesting enemy control over Guadalcanal, but we've at least secured our position on Ranelli Island, and we also have a small airbase there uh, that we can, we can base out of. Again, I think these are just float planes, so I'm going to continue ignoring their scouting over my cargo ships. Again, they just appear to be float planes. think can these actually can I do this uh, give me new no Renelli Island scramble your planes and go intercept they're within range let's go shoot down these enemy aircraft
Oh shit. It says encounter. It doesn't tell me what, but I can't skip it. So I'm guessing there's this task force is about to get attacked by something. Search for and engage enemy forces in the area. I don't know what's in the area. It looks like we've got some wildcats over our task force, so we do have fighters. It's uh, 12 o'clock. You can see here we are now in a battle. We've got our Northampton leading the way. Let's actually... Like, why would I want my destroyers in the rear? I don't know what the right formations are here. I don't want a three column, I don't think. Do a two column? There was no auto resolve for this particular fight. It could be an enemy submarine for all I know. Which I don't like the idea of my cruisers leading the way on that. I guess I'll do a circular maybe. All right, so I ordered a circular formation. You can see my destroyers here are peeling off. Shit, the Chester was struck by a torpedo. All right, so we know there's an enemy submarine out this way. Ah! One of them hit my destroyer. Oh, no. Where did that? I didn't even see that one. Another destroyer hit. God damn it. This is a nightmare. Uh, okay. How about you open... How do you turn on your sonar? Oh, wait. This is an enemy aircraft? I don't think there was enemy aircraft. I think that was a... That was not... No, that's just a float plane. Hey, aircraft, back here. Go attack that guy. Alright, so our, our cruisers... What is its damage situation? Heavy damage, heavy flooding. That's not a good sign. Um... All right, active sonar turned on. There's got to be an enemy sub out here. Is someone dropping depth charges? I hear clicking. That destroyer is dead in the water. This thing suffered minor damage? I don't know what from. Is that it over there? I think that's an enemy sub. Can I... Let's take a look here. Let's close damage control. Can I see anything? Ooh. I feel like it's right there. Left, left full rudder. 
Type 1B submarine. It auto identified that. That's nice. We have a 93% solution on the target. 97. Wow. That's a great solution. Oh, I didn't want to do that. I can't even see where the enemy sub is. I can't really tell. I mean, I don't, I don't have no idea what, what depth is this guy's at. Do these guys just drop their own depth charges though? That would be, that would be preferable. There's the enemy sub. We can see it. It's pretty shallow actually. You're just sitting in the sitting here doing nothing. All right, so one of our just the destroyer is sinking, by the way. I'm dropping depth charges, but don't really have a contact by the looks of it. I don't think I hit him at all. I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, okay, so it's at 194 feet. All right, that makes sense. Good call, good call, no clue. Clearly, I was fighting with no clue. Ha, 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 ha. All right, can we get a better idea of where this guy... Where did he go? So it still says we have a solution on the guy. He's diving or sinking. 240 feet. But I don't see the, the sub on here anymore. Yeah, I... Not sure where that enemy sub is. So he's at 262 feet. So how would that work from a depth perspective? Delay by what? 20 seconds? 5 seconds? But we're not picking anything up. So we still claim to have a contact, but we don't know where, I guess. Bearing 31. Is that 31 true? Or relative? Okay. How about you speed up a little bit? All right, we're going to turn the other direction. I'm going to speed up a little bit, see if I can't get a contact on him. It says bearing is 340 almost directly behind me but I feel like I'm seeing shadows in the water where I feel like the enemy might be alright so this bearing is 38 let's speed up a little bit guys I suppose they could be below the layer and that's why we're not uh, picking it up Sonar is on. We can hear it and we can see it. I 
Heading is 36. Bearing is 39. Range is 1,000 yards. So it looks like we're closing now. This guy is at 1,000 yards as well. Depth, 262. So anybody know what settings? Okay, we can do th we can do five depth charges, but what's the delay? I don't know what the... What does the generic attack command do? I don't know. Depth charge on one, type 1B. So it basically it just tells my ship to attack the target that I've been trying to manually target the whole time. Yeah, I mean, I know the longer the time, the deeper the explosion. I just don't know what I should be setting it to. I don't know how many seconds equals how many feet. So it looks like they're closing. They probably need to be making a little bit better speed than that. This guy's claiming 600 yards. I don't see a solution or a target on here. But I guess we'll see what the AI does now that it's set to a attack orders. Oh, that's delay between depth charge? It's not... I assumed that was depth. In any event, he's closing the range. 18 knots. Alright, so we're closing. 400 yards. Again, we don't... I wonder if we don't have a target on here. Is Could it be the layer? I know the thermal layer is modeled in the game. He could be below the layer. Let's see here. When we get inside 300 yards, will we auto-fire? I'd also, if I was a destroyer commander, making an attack run with a depth charge, I would be moving more than 17 knots. Also, another destroyer probably shouldn't be right behind you. Just saying. Unless you want to get blown up. Okay, it looks like we've got it. We've got the contact now. The reed is turning to engage. Two hundred yards. Type 1B. I like that it auto-identified the target. That was nice. We're going to see depth charges rolling here soon. 100 yards. What's our solution look like? 84%. All right, so we drop, we're dropping depth charges now. There we go. God, they're a thing of beauty, aren't they? I hope my... Uh, my rear ship doesn't run into them. It's going to go right over the top of them when they blow. Did we sink it? We know we lost contact. I'm guessing because of the depth charges. You're going to lose contact with all of those depth. Jesus. We dropped a fuck ton of depth charges. That turbulence is going to probably prevent active sonar from working. I'm really impressed that you lose contact with that when that happens. Are we going to regain contact now? Hey, SEO. Okay, we did reestablish contact. Orders for this guy are still to depth charge on this. Let's take a look at the underwater camera. The sub appears to be doing okay. We will watch this depth charge run from the vantage point of the destroyer, or from the vantage point of the submarine. See if we can't see how close those depth charges get. So the next destroyer is closing. And by the way, how many of these things do we have? 60. All right, so it's a pretty good amount. How many does the read have left? 30. You got to love watching two destroyers. just go at a an enemy sub or at least pinning him down while our cruisers are way off this direction 
All right, so the depth charges are off. I feel like we probably fired them a little bit early. Let's see where these things land. They're way off over here, aren't they? Yeah, they're not really all that close. Oh, some of them are getting a little bit closer. One right there. That one might have done some damage. That last charge there. Also, it looks like the hold is, is pocked up a bit. All right, Drayton, going for another attack. Give me some more big booms. So the destroyer kind of is waiting to listen to see what he what he hears. You can see he's slowing down to listen to the enemy sub. Both of them actually are. We got a 97% solution on this. Can you speed time compression up a bit? You can. So are they going to go back in for the hunt? Go back into charge to attack him? They're just going to listen? Just sit and listen. Well, he's surfacing! Oh my god, open fire, boys! He must have been badly damaged or something to decide, oh, I'm going to surface. Ram him! Full speed ahead! Ramming speed. Oh, it's already sinking. You can see it listing. Why are you launching depth charges? It's on the surface. It's sinking for sure. Or diving. My destroyer is taking moderate damage in flooding. Pretty sure we sank it. Yep, we got it, boys. He may have sank a destroyer, crippled a cruiser, badly damaged another destroyer in the ramming. But we got it. There you go. All right. The Drayton's on fire, by the way. Please don't scuttle the damn ship. All right, so we have to exit out of the, the battle now. So moderate damage to the Drayton and to the heavy cruiser Chester. Moderate damage, or the Lamson was sunk. And the Type 1B was sunk. So 3,600 tons for the enemy sub versus only 1,500 for us. All right, everybody, that's going to do it for my first look at the campaign in the new game War on the Sea. Um, it was a bit of a longer video, not a ton of action. I was kind of trying to show you some of the basics of creating new convoys, new task forces, uh, putting ships in motion to try and take some bases, um, you know, some of the, the air patrol type stuff. But with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this video up. Uh, this was taken from a live stream from my Twitch channel, and it was about a two hour and a two and a half hour live stream. I'm going to try and chop up the rest of it because there's a lot of sort of dead time in there as well. Um, but there's also some really interesting moments. So this is the start of a series, uh, but it probably won't be like a full blown. Let's show you every minute of the let's play. I think what I'd like to do is kind of show you some of the highlights in each each episode and sort of progress, but but cut out some of the fat as well. Do a little bit more editing than I usually do on these videos. Just because there's a lot of, it's kind of like Rule the Waves, where there are a lot of little actions um, that Honestly, it would be nice if you could kind of auto-resolve. But you did get a little bit of a look of the anti-submarine, uh, you know, warfare type activities that you can do in this game. I actually kind of feel like the sub-hunting is maybe a little bit too tedious, but also pretty well done. Um, it's challenging, and it, it feels right. Uh, except for the fact that it always seems like the enemy's all, the subs always get off the first shot of torpedoes against your task forces, which kind of mean you're, you're, it feels like you're always taking damage. 
unless you just know the second you go into one of these things to you know turn hard to the hard to port or starboard and then you could maybe avoid the torpedoes but if you do that that feels a little gamey too so anyway that's enough of me rambling i uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video let me know your thoughts down below and until next time i'm out